Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books and my name is Drake. The Flash is the fastest man alive, there's no doubt about that. However, in my recent videos on if he's faster than Superman and Shazam slash Captain Marvel, whatever you want to call him, a lot of you guys were very eager to point out that one of the Flashes, namely Wally West, can actually run faster than instant teleportation. Yes, I am aware of this feat. But for the people who want to say that this is Wally West's ultimate demonstration of speed, they might want to actually read the book or sit back and relax because we're going to look over this storyline and put an end to this debate once and for all. When people talk about The Flash running faster than instant teleportation, they're typically talking about a storyline from 1998 called The Human Race, which has been featured in several versus debates across the internet and was given a lot of attention thanks to this video done by my good friend Tyler over on the Imaginary Axis. The Human Race was featured in The Flash Volume 2 number 136 through 138 in 1998 and was co-written by two industry legends, Grant Morrison and Mark Miller. The fact that Morrison had his hand in this means that things are going to get pretty weird, so buckle in. Okay, so the story begins with a couple of extra-dimensional gamblers coming to Earth, forcing the planet to choose a champion to take place in a great race of sorts. If the champion loses, forfeits, or decides not to participate, the planet would be instantly destroyed. Naturally, the current Flash of the era, Wally West, was chosen as their candidate. This actually appears to be a reference to the Golden Age characters Rock and Sorbonne, a pair of alien gamblers who have messed with Superman in the past and actually roped him into racing Barry Allen with threats of destroying Earth and Krypton. Just a neat little side bit of trivia, but back to the story. The Flash is transported to the radio world of Quiz, which exists separate from the various universes in the local DC multiverse. Its inhabitants are a race of beings made out of radio signals, the most notable of which being Crackle, a Sonic the Hedgehog looking dude that was Wally's imaginary friend back when he was a kid. Turns out though that he's actually real. Because comics. Crackle is racing on behalf of Quiz, which like Earth was also being threatened by the Cosmic Gamblers. In fact, Crackle had beaten six champions before Wally. With the fate of both worlds on the line, Wally and Crackle race throughout all of space and time. But during a short rest, Crackle reveals that he has only survived this long by cheating. Crackle had the inhabitants of Quiz running non-stop, and he uses the kinetic energy built up from that to allow him to keep running on and on. He's basically having them literally run for their lives. This gives Wally an idea though. He challenges the cosmic gamblers who were unable to turn down a bet that he could make it to Earth before they could. The deck was heavily stacked against Wally, since the gamblers move instantaneously, meaning that he would literally need to be faster than that. Regardless, the bet was struck and Wally manages to convince all of Earth to run in unison. Every man, woman, and child from average citizens to imprisoned supervillains all join together for the sake of their world. This includes the kinetic energy generated by speedsters and the near speedster levels from beings like Superman. If that wasn't enough though, Crackle gives Wally all of his speed in addition, which includes all of the kinetic energy of everyone on Quiz running in unison as well. With all of this speed at his disposal, Wally managed to calculate the race down to the septosecond, and he made it back to Earth in time, but he still had a little bit more to spare. So in this spare time, he adjusts every single radio on Earth to the frequency of Quiz. This basically brought all of Quiz to Earth temporarily, which spared it from destruction when Wally ended up winning the race and not Crackle. This ultimately ended up being a victory for the Flash, and the Cosmic Gamblers moved on, never to be seen again. So there you have it. There is no way that Wally West could have done this without all of the help that he received. Wally cannot run this fast naturally. And when you're analyzing characters' speed, strength, whatever, you have to make sure that you're not counting temporary power boots, because that is the exception, not the norm. You need to find characters at their baseline. Not so fast, Drake.
Tyler from the Imaginary Axis? That's right, I heard you were talking smack about The Flash. Dude, really? Just give me a moment. I feel like I'm partially responsible for the confusion going on here, and I wanted to make a few things clear about the story. First of all, I feel like a lot of people have misconstrued the meaning of faster than an instant. Try to understand that in our universe, we consider an instant the amount of time it takes a photon, the fastest thing in the universe, to cross a Planck length the shortest distance in the universe. This is the smallest amount of time that exists for us simply because there's nothing at all fast enough to move during this time frame. Secondly, when this flash beat gets tossed around, it almost always has this number attached to it. Again, that's my bad since that number usually comes from a video I made. So you interrupted my video to tell me that your calculations were wrong? Oh no. First of all, those weren't even my calculations in the first place. I mean, I checked them to make sure they were accurate, sure, but I'm not here to admit the calculations were wrong. I came here to point out that they are extremely low estimates. What? The calculations used in that video purposefully assume the lowest possible estimate for how far the Flash moved during his run which is if he crossed a distance equal to the Earth-Moon system during a conventional Planck instant, when in actuality, we have no idea where he was in the universe at that time in the story, so the number is probably exponentially bigger. Here's how fast he would be going if we keep the Planck instant number, but assume he was on the other side of the observable universe. Holy crap. Yeah, and if you add up all the speed created by everybody on Earth and Quiz, you only get this. Well, yeah, but that's still a lot. Yeah, maybe, but it's nothing compared to this, or even this. Besides, Wally chose to speed steal from other beings in that story because, at the time, he was afraid of the speed force sucking him up like it did to Barry Allen in the past. Once he got more used to tapping into his powers, Wally was definitely seen going faster. Also, the speed force controls all of the universe's kinetic energy. Siphoning speed from the universe is just as natural to the Flash as going fast. Okay, fine. But you have to admit that people tend to take this story out of context. I mean, whenever I see people on the internet talk about how the Flash can outrun instant teleportation, they say it like it's just a thing he can instantly do. Yeah, I don't appreciate people taking the story out of context any more than you do. And I feel kind of bad that I might have contributed to it, but what can I do? I presented the information, and it's not up to me if people don't listen to the whole story. Besides, that's not even the fastest the Flash can go. Wait, 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 what? Oh yeah, here he was able to outrace Zoom, who actually exists on a completely separate timeline. Here he outruns the Big Bang itself, and of course, literally every time he dives completely into the Speed Force or runs through time, he is entering a higher plane of existence in which he is essentially moving infinitely fast to anybody in our third dimension. I just didn't mention any of these in my original video because... Well, it's kind of impossible to calculate how fast any of those non-infinite speed feats are. And you know, this is important, because people would know that if they just read the comics for themselves instead of just repeating what they hear online. Exactly. Support your local comic shop and give the books a read for yourself, guys. Exactly. And by the way... Tyler, leave. I'm just kidding. A big thank you to Tyler for coming on the show. I had a lot of fun making this. And if you like what you saw today, then why not go over to his channel and see the video that sparked this entire debate in the first place? Or if you want to see more of my stupid face, then you can consider subscribing or watching another one we have here on the channel. Anyway, I hope you learned a little something new, and maybe I'll see you next time.